Hi everybody, um, I'm Jerome Wright. I'm back here off vacation, and um, I'm here. You're joining me on my uh, my YouTube channel, Jeronification. And um, in this video, I'm going to try to do my best in layman's terms to um, to explain through my experience and encounter, which I have, um, of how monuments and building structures and um, I mean, just globally, these these monuments just have this symbolic meaning, which is referencing the creation and genetic bridging of mankind, and um, and and they are identifying who we are, and there's an underlining symbolic message to them all, um, which actually means that there are a select few that knew all along. How mankind genetically came to be come into existence and creatures in which we were genetically bridged over that altered the state of likenesses genetically um, our physical appearances and um, our, our, our genetic being um, from their original states and origins which of that of um, um, ape and Africans um, which subsequently resulted in the um, the likenesses of a, uh, of other mankind throughout um, the world globally, and um, if you think about it, without me really going into um, great detail, it nothing makes more better sense than actually what I'm what I'm stating to you through my videos because um, these animals of our world, I mean. What better way to explain how mankind genetically became who he is today through um, through such a process that I that I describe here? I mean, there is uh, there's references in, in in religion. There's references in our world's art. There's references in um, sculptures and um, and creations such as this of how mankind was genetically bridged over. Um, his original state and likenesses of um, of those ancestors that came before. Um, all right, before I get too uh, d drawn into um, what I'm trying to explain here and get, so I, let me just get into describing it through the videos because that's where I actually come in. Um, 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 where I'm, I'm best suited to actually explain what I'm saying. I'm saying here, we have this is a monument in Philadelphia, okay, and this is at the Philadelphia Museum. And this is the George Washington Monument. And what is George Washington saying here? This is a bizarre monument on, on its face. This is not only a, 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 a United States president or former president of the United States, but he is also pretty much the, the, um, the founding, the forefather of that, of, um, of, um, um, of America. And, um, and, um, and it's building of its of its um, democracy and all of that and so forth and so with. I mean, through through battles of, of, of um, wars fought the whole nine, and um, and the Constitution and all of that stuff there. But anyway, let's leave that alone and then let's go into this. What is George Washington doing here, and what is the message that he is stating? I mean, here you have the man that, up on a horse, up on top, okay, on the horse. But below this, at each level. There are um, Greek gods mixed in with creatures. I mean, from the creatures being from bison to um, to, to snakes to um, to deer-like creatures to to crocodiles. Um, I mean, you name it. And these creatures are here on each level. And then at each level, it has a mankind-like figure or woman-like figure there from mankind. You have eagles. You have all of that. So what is George Washington stating here, people? I mean, on face, this entire... The, I mean, with these creatures here, this is a displacement of that, of what is actually... I mean, what is the message, in other words, that is that George Washington is stating here? And... I mean, it just seems like I mean, but yet you're drawn to this and just don't and just don't know and can't figure out what in the world is he stating. Well, basically, people, without uh, without going into and and trying to describe it, this is what George Washington is stating right here. The same exact thing here. Here is another sculpture, and I forget where it's actually from. Actually, to be totally honest with you, but it's a giant penis. 
and there is it's one of those islands I don't know if it is I know it's not Easter Island but it's just as similar to what that of what you would see in that and then globally around the world and this is a this is a this is a um, a giant penis stone penis and it has a being inside which they will actually tell you um, if you google this this um, this um, this image of there will tell you that it's a mythical being and it was a god and a deity and all of that I mean people that's bull crap what this is saying is the same exact thing that Washington is stating right here in this image and what it is stating that this being genetically wants existence ex existed through a sequence a uh, sequence of genetic bridgings and now through the penis in this region of where this 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 monument is through the penis the genetics of this being has continued on this is what this is stating people and this is why globally you see these these type of images which references of that of the penis meaning that physically this being does not exist no more whereas this being once genetically did exist but now through the read the through the penises and through the vaginas of the civilization of the people in that civilization this being still exists through a genetic evolution of a cocktail a chemistry a genetic brewery a brewing of these genetics that this creature created genetically he still exists in that area and that's what this is all about now I want to go to George Washington now George Washington has these creatures there's bisons there's alligators there's bears there's all of that here what George Washington is telling you is that through the penises and vaginas of all of those creatures that are on each level there was genetic bridging from the originals from the original um, 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 bridge off the original founding stones of that of mankind which represents eight and Africans okay and through each level George Washington is telling you he himself was bridged over okay subsequently he's stating that these genetics he is all a part of genetically on each level bridged over and even over his horse and now he reemerges as this genetic superhero so to speak that in, 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 in an era that where he has genetically altered the genes of that of mankind and he is at the top so you can take all of this and turn this into a penis and then you have George Washington genetically continuing on just like what is being stated here now these creatures that are here all you have to do in history I can take this now that I have explained this to you I can show you in Christianity I can show you in, in, in the ancient record of Christianity I can show you in the entire Renaissance era their art um, the record of art I can show you in, in Roman and Greek I can show you in global records where everything that I have just told you it can be linked to this and these each one of these creatures and how they genetically contributed to the genetic altering of that of mankind one thing is always linking the other there these are records people and I like to say this in, in, in this sense that such an operation on such a massive scale requires a massive record and this is how they recorded it right in your face each one of these creatures which has a genetic link to that of our prehistoric creatures of our world shows how each one of these creatures was bridged over to in, in a step up pyramid way to alter mankind's genetic appearance 
physical appearance and genetic inner um, um, being to that of the likenesses from which is now being commemorated today. Now, this explains why George Washington in the in the Washington um, I mean in the Washington State Building, why you see images such as this as George Washington portraying himself as that is you, what you would see Jesus and God and Zeus Greek God sitting amongst the clouds George Washington is stating this is the, the we call this the wheel of life the cycle of nation of these genes of life George Washington is stating from these ancient genetics he created his own and in this circle where you see him in, uh, encircled with all of these women he's telling you that the genetics that he created he genetically cross-referenced himself and, and, and contaminated genetically contaminated the masses of that of those beings that are encircled here almost I like to state the best way to describe this is if AIDS were created and he's stating that he's spreading himself genetically through a process of, of, of genetics that he that he created so therefore he's stating that although he is no more he still exists genetically and his trail of genetics and what he created can still be traced today all you have to do is look at the record that is there and 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 I can and this can be read because this loop back here all you have to do is look at these beings and the reference of these beings and then go through into history back into history and the genetic of these beings the genetic trail is referenced as well and then what George Washington did here is referenced as well too so a team of experts all I have to do is direct them and describing and what I'm telling them is what happened and they can tell you exactly what gene what genetics George Washington is describing because all of this people is real is reality back here these genetic I mean these um these Greek gods and these so-called mythical gods and mythical beings and um and um and, and and scenarios where they're stating that all of this happened are all genetic referencings of our ancestors which actually occurred but it's not happening in the sense of being like superheroes but it's they're referencing genetic blueprints a genetic grail to how man evolved and that's what this is and each one of these beings that are referenced are telling you how they in some way or another altered the genetic becoming and genetic evolution of mankind and this is what's happening with that of Jesus and this is what's happening with that of Noah and this is what's happening with that of John the Baptist and all of these people and this is what the popes are doing today cross-referencing of that of mankind's genes I'm telling you that this is what the cross means the cross-referencing of mankind's genes and genetics and the Vatican is the main cross-referencing point for that and I'm telling you that through them and through the royalty of our world these bloodlines are being preserved and altered and then the rest of the world is being genetically destroyed contaminated while new genes are being created um, I'm going to just show you here up close some of these creatures Now I have been to the Philadelphia, um, Washington, um, 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 George, um, George Washington, um, the Philadelphia Muse Museum, where all of these things are on display. That's me about a year or so ago. Okay, and as you see, you see deer and antler, you see snakes, and you see these beings telling you this is all a genetic message that can be read okay this is all a genetic reference that could be read alright so each level all I have to do is tell an expert 
the founding stones that they are referencing that each one of these creatures are are are, are, are on and I can show I can show our experts of our world how mankind genetically became from their origins from the original state from beyond that and then through each creature how we were genetically bridged up upon on each like a step like pyramid way I can tell them how it was done where they can look for the records and in which direction these genes are going and where they're being referenced and what's being stated by this um by these by these symbols all right again there's the creature there's the bear again I'm stating through the semen and through the blood of this creature at one significant point in the evolution of mankind man this beast was utilized to alter the genes of mankind I'm telling you that in each and every creature pretty much of our world the alligator the crocodile these creatures reptilian genes were introduced into the genetics of mankind as well these mythical beings genetically truly existed they sacrificed their bodies to be bridged over creatures that they're depicted with I think on this level here there's crocodiles you you see crocodiles and um and other creatures you'll see birds I mean these beings genetically sacrificed themselves and that's why they're being commemorated around the world globally just like Mary Magdalene Jesus' mother Mary genetically they sacrificed themselves and I can show you not I'm not just I mean just making this up here I can show you which creatures they genetically sacrificed themselves with and how bloodlines was altered here look at this look at how bizarre this this is but yet it has an underlining message and yes we were we were bridged over birds and you say well Jerome how in the hell can a bird can, can mankind be bridged over an eagle this eagle represents the ancient the, the, the dinosaur this is where this bird evolved from these are genetics these this can actually happen if we were, this is um, through the um, the um, the, um, the the Peruvian burial stones, with mankind shown there that those Peruvian burial stones represent dinosaur eggs. That's why they have the shape that they have. These people are saying, look, through the dinosaur, through the genetics of the dinosaur, those eggs, not the per se the dinosaur, but we evolved from the dinosaur, and that's why those burial stones are in the shapes of eggs. And they have depictions of likenesses of mankind that looks just like the dinosaurs that's depicted on the stones with them. They're saying genetically at one point we evolved from that creature. And here this bird is a symbolization of that creature. And yes, there are genetic periods, like let's say for every 400 years, that our genes can be re, re, um, um, recycled back into the originating points from which they had actually came. And there's a record of this. This record can be read, people. Scientists can actually now figure out through everything that I am stating in the direction that I can point them, of what actually occurred genetic, genetically with mankind. This is beyond the Holy Grail. And that is what is being stated here, people. Why else would you have an eagle? Look, arms stretched, I mean, um, wings stretched out. Look, the eagle stating that it was bridged over. The eagle's, on, look, a bridge on this, and look, and the eagle stating bridged over from either side. Look, and it's showing you these genetics coming off in both directions, and then have a female up in the, in the middle, which represents that of the vagina. Then has the, I mean, I'm telling you people that this is, this, this is, this is absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, seemingly unbelievable. But then and again, when you look in the mirror at yourself, and you look at all of the likenesses of mankind today, all of the different likenesses globally 
And then look at our world's creatures. And then you start to see the pattern emerging. And then look at the art of where there's lines in the art. And, 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 and it's showing you that the, um, the people depicted with the lines, wearing the lion's clothing, cloaked by the lion's um, skin. This is what this is all symbolizing, meaning genetically, they are genetically linked to that beast. Um, the stories, the mythical stories of Hercules with the lion. You know, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. There's no ending to it. But it all makes sense suddenly when you realize it for what it is. And it's all making a, a references of genetic. There was nothing that mattered most, most important to mankind than who they genetically are. Look at us today, people. When we have children and what do we have? The pictures and the images in our, that are in our house. We have pictures of our mothers, our grandfathers, and, and their grandfathers and grandmas. We have albums of that, of people we genetically came, be, um, came from. And this is what these people are stating from our ancestry, which they acted like and claimed like they knew nothing about. If everybody in the world knew this, we, they, they would have a problem. And this is why those people... Through Christianity, that's why, and that's why through the um, through the royalty of our world, they can have this these moments of enjoyment of this higher power and higher knowledge, where the others and the masses of the people are suffering because they have the hidden ancient secret to who we genetically are, besides everything else there. But there is power in this, and knowing who you are, not for just medicine purposes, but for identity purposes and understanding who you are, people. Helps you understand yourself in a way that actually sets you free. You're not a, you're not a slave no more. You're not. I mean, mentally you are a slave because if you know that at one point you were genetically bridged over, the, your ancestors was bridged over this creature. Don't you think that through these creatures that you were been, um, been genetically bridged over, you would know now? To study this creature, study this creature's behavior. Look at the um the um the at the point at where we were uh, um, bridged over this creature, and this explains why there were horned beings in and 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 um in our, in our evolution, which they actually now want you to believe that they were mythical beings, such as devils and such as um um um, um minotaurs and centaurs and all of that stuff there, um, um half horse half man. The reason why people is because. That we were genetically bridged over them. Don't you think if you understood who you genetically were, that it would give you a higher sense of knowledge and understanding and understanding who you are today? It would give you a place better mentally within yourself. And when you start opening up these doors in your mind to, to saying, hey, this is my ancestor, and, and you start understanding and open up your mind, what happens, people, is mentally and psychologically, you become instinctively aware, aware of everything that is around you. And when you start thinking and behaving in a way that this beast would, the migration and all of that, you'll start understanding, be un becoming to understand that, oh my gosh, it's like there's more to me than I could possibly ever understood. But what's blocking you from seeing, stating this is that they gave you something else to, to falsely believe in, and that was religion. Once you understand who you were genetically, don't you think people that this creature migrates? We were genetically bridged over the elephant as well, too. That creature migrates. What do most of our people do in our world? We stand still. These creatures have lasted on our planet for seemingly forever. Through migration and through their behavior. Leonardo da Vinci, um, Nostradamus, they, why do you think they went around globally studying, studying these creatures and the and behavior of these creatures and animals? They knew that we evolved through these creatures. And they knew through their behavior came, became survival. Mankind's true existence, is, is, is the, the greater part of it is survival. You can survive by knowing that this creature was your ancestor and its behavior can actually lend to a greater part in your knowledge of understanding how you can survive. If this creature migrated from one area to the next seasonally, 
that is doing it for a reason instinctively to either get further or closer to the sun or the energy belts of our planet not just this creature though people many of the creatures of our world we were genetically bridged over there's a genetic sequence um what else is there that I'm going to talk to you about with this all right I'm going to I'm going to tell you uh, something about that this this is actually called the the uh, um the apos the hypothesis of Washington and that is in the Washington building I mean um in the and, and that's what that's called actually all right and I got this I believe off of Wikipedia I believe and let me see where it, that's what that is when you when you Google that. Now, I found that this creation was for Washington. Let me let me tell you who actually created that. And um and the guy that actually created that for for um for Washington um was Constantino Brumanidi. And um and this I guess it was created in 1865. Now, this Constantino Brumidi um, 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 character, he has a funny history because he had been in the Vatican for four years prior to that. So now he's linked to the Vatican, and he was actually the um, he was the um, the the painter for which which pope was he the painter for? Okay, Brumidi had worked for three years in the Vatican under Pope Gregory and. I don't know if that's the 15th or the 16th or whatever, and served several um, aristocrats as an artist for palaces and villas, including the Prince Torrelinia. He immigrated to the United States in 1852 and spent much of his last 25 years of his life working in the capital. In addition to the hypothesis of Washington, he, des uh, he designed the, Br um, the Bermudi Bermudia corridors. So this guy... Is that created this for Washington is linked to the Vatican and the royalty. Now, mind you that I have decoded the Vatican and I have decoded the royalty, the bloodlines. I can tell you where the bloodlines of Jesus are today, where they originated at, and at each level that there was a genetic bridging in which Jesus was involved, and Mary Magdalene, and, and John the Baptist, and all of the others that are mentioned in the Bible, Noah, all of those great figures. Moses, I can show you through the art, through the statues, and through the record how these people genetically bridged over was bridged over. Now, mind you, mind you that now we have the Vatican, the artist of the Vatican that comes here. Now, there's something else that you need to know about this. This minority group of artists, this Renaissance artists that knew how to do this work, also themselves were genetic bridges. Now, I'm just not revealing this now, people. This doesn't just come out of just these people that created this art could only have the understanding of this art by genetically sacrificing themselves as well. Now, I don't know if George Washington knew that, but this Bermuda character, in my mind, was not a defector from the Vatican, but he was sent there by the Pope to genetically cross contaminate. George Washington and whatever George Washington thought that he was genetically creating here is also cross contaminated by that of that Pope Gregory because through the penis, through the semen and through the blood I'll be willing to bet my life on it that George Washington <laughs> you know had a sexual affair with this artist that actually created that and I bet you that without even going into much more detail. I bet you that I can find the artwork and references of where that actually occurred. Because in these genetic cross referencing and bridgings, there was not no thing of 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 of, of um of um doing this through the bloodline, I mean through the through needles and all of that. They did it the old fashioned way. And that was through homosexual acts. Transference of bodily fluids in the old fashioned way. So I'm claiming that this artist Bermidi not only did he have a homosexual affair with those in the Vatican and, and, and those of royalty who he encountered. Now, before, that he also had this type of relationship with George Washington. And that cross-contamination can be linked from 
that royalty in which he worked for prior and that of the Vatican. And wherever these references of these cross references are taking place and these bridgings, there's a genetic trail, almost like a money trail, like a paper trail. And I can take you backwards from this bizarre scenario through that through Bermidi or whoever the hell his name is, that artist, back to Gregory at the Vatican, back to the royalty that he worked for, and back to the history of his family, his mentors, his art school, and keep going back and back and back and back and back, people, because you know why? Because I am 100% right. That's why. Now, let me tell you something else. This, the name of this artist, I mean, the name of this painting, The Apostasis of Washington. Now, I don't know if that is linking to that, but it actually makes kind of sense to me. Because I've seen somewhere, I read somewhere, and I don't have it um, to print it out, of course, but that Washington stared away from, steered away from that of religion. And he actually warned other people of that, of the Vatican. And, and I read it somewhere, but I just didn't print it out. And he had this thing against Christianity. And he warned others of it. Now, <clears throat> and this is how I'm saying that he, inter he engaged this artist under the record, under, 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 unbeknown to him that he engaged the Vatican and did not even realize it. Okay, but that's that's something else. I'll go into that and I'll, I'll explain that later on. Um, but however, now <clears throat> that word uh, apostasis of Washington is taken. There's a similar word that actually that scenario I just stated apostasy. Apostasy. Let me read that. Um, it's a Greek word. It's um, a defection or a revolt from a part. It is a formal. Um, disaffiliation from abandonment or renunciation of religion by a person and that's what I'm stating that this is actually stating and this makes perfect sense because here's Washington lifting himself up in a scenario of being that equivalent to God and, and Jesus descending upon into heaven and all of that or ascending into heaven and this is what this is actually being stated so apostasy the definition of that apostasy for of of, of the because that's the name of this I'm painting of Washington makes sense because here's Washington stating, "Hey, I am at the level of God here now." But wouldn't you think that that would be a slap in the face to that of the Vatican? But unbeknown to Washington, that he thinking that he's all of this, and 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 the Vatican then sent their so-called defector and their painter in to under the radar, quash all of this genetically. Washington, in his lesser understanding of what the Vatican is doing, now he thinks he done, he done got himself an artist where this guy was sent to genetically contaminate or thwart the efforts of Washington. Did you people get that? Alright, let me let me keep going because this, this, gets, this gets better. Let me keep reading this here now. Um, let me see what we add here. A person formerly... Oh, okay. The term apostasy is used by socialists to mean renunciation and criticism of or opposition to a person's former religion in a technical sense and without... Um, poor, um, oh, whatever. I can't even actually get that out. The term of this... Uh, of the, uh, um, the term is sometimes used metamorphically in a... Um, refer to renunciation or non-religious belief or cause, such as political party, brain trust, or sports team. Alright, now, people, this is what Washington is saying here. The apostasis of Washington, this painting. So it's actually now linked to apostasy, meaning that he is saying, hey, screw religion, screw that, all of the other, the, all of the above, I am now elevated to that status because I have found the secret and now I can create this is what religion is about and unbeknown to Washington the Vatican has the little monkey wrench in his plan now, I know this is going to make for a great story later on people because I can actually 
all of it. I can show you how it was done, where it was done, and through which process that it was done, and through which contamination was sent from Rome into Washington and into I mean George Washington, and I can show you which genetics was actually used to contaminate or thwart the efforts of what this man had created, and I can also show you what he created genetically. All right, now. Um, put that lot out there. I think I covered all bases. Now, if that don't beat all, I'm going to close this off. I'm only going to make this video, I guess maybe about 45 minutes. I'm going to try to close that off. Now, if that don't beat all, through every so many years, what happens is through these genetic prisons and manipulations, what the Vatican did back then through the artists that they sent there, your mini D, in 1865, it's my position that every three, four to five hundred years, almost like a medicine, a genetic medicine, there has to be another interference or another step up level of these genes must be, I mean, these cross contaminations must be kept reintroduced. Once it takes place, it has to be a follow-up procedure. And I'm stating that it takes place every anywhere from any three to four to five hundred years. So if that's the case then, I can show you what occurred three to five, four hundred years after the fact. And you know what happened? And another Vatican server or a genetic um, contaminator came to Washington and to thwart to make sure that what Washington has done was definitely destroyed. You know who else came to Washington to actually do do so? This guy. Salvador Dali. This nut has a complete record. Now this also, people, is the Philadelphia Museum. This is right across the street from, from this. It's right in the middle of this building here. So what in the world did... Look, look at Salvador's Dali name up there in red. This represents the blood. And this represents the white part, the semen. What in the world was, could Salvador Pals possibly do? Now this is the, um, the Philadelphia Museum of Art and whatever, okay? Of uh, artifacts and art. So what in the world did, what kind of contribution to this museum? I mean, I mean granted, Dali is an artist, but his art is just as bizarre as he is. So, Dali Imitir, this also can be linked to a genetic contamination. I can show you where this man, and his through his artwork, has shown where he has went to possibly every continent on this planet and has genetically contaminated that area, and his artwork references it. Take for a minute and digest that thought. And now he... I just told you and explained to you about what has occurred here and what has occurred here, what is being stated here. And I even gave you, link you to how the artist from the Vatican back in 1800 was linked to that of Gregory, Pope Gregory. And this guy is linked to the Vatican. He has been to the Vatican on several occasions. Once was to convert to Christianity, and the other was to be cured for his phobia of the female vagina. Yeah, that's right. So I guess the, the, the Pope had a way of curing Dali of his phobia of the of female vagina. Now, Dali would never have had a phobia of the female vagina if he wasn't playing with penises from day one. He later married a artist's wife named Gala, and which I'm going to do a story on, but I'm not going to try to fit it in here because it's going to run me over my time. But 
this nut, his paintings, let me show you one of which. Is flying dildos and penises with that of a pope coming to telling you that genet genetically Dali is stating that all of these penises he genetically was bridged over and Dali's artworks lets me know through which each genetic bridging that he sacrificed himself to. And da here, Dali, Dali candidly tells you that he interacted with a pope. That he done been to the Vatican twice. And now look at the pope waving. Now why would Dali have in a painting or in a drawing a waving pope while he's being shown with these penises? Oh well, you don't think that their penises or their their what you call are their um are their flying dildos? Well, here's another painting of Dali's of a woman being chastised by her own chastise, and there's the same objects shown going up her butt in the air. There's being shown here in the clouds with them in her mouth, and it shows how the railing is broken. Showing you that, that which represents there's a bridging between the woman and and what is being stated here. I know what this painting means, by the way, to people. And you see how those that railing is being broken and bridged between those penises. You see that it shows you it's making a, it's a statement as to how Salvador. I mean, how this this woman was genetically bridged over, and this actually has a message as well too. The same thing is being stated here. Dali has paintings where he done been to China, to Africa. Even to America, and Dali is showing, is showing how he genetically sacrificed himself and then contaminated other areas. I can show you paintings. And all of Dali's work is, con is, is actually for that. That's what his painting, that's what his paint. the calls of his paintings are all stating. His surreal paintings are all stating that he genetically sacrificed himself. With blood and semen engaged homosexual acts and was a, an, an allegiance with the Vatican to cross contaminate himself with that of the popes. And then he went out and cross contaminated areas. And that's how come you can now see Daly on how he got his image here on Washington, stating now what Washington has done. The Vatican now has overturned it through their man, Dali, who, I'm telling you, was homosexually involved with those at the Vatican. Not just the Vatican, though. I'm going to close this out with this here. I'm going to go out with a bang with this. Dali also stated in this collaboration of art with, 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 with Disney... That him and Disney had a homosexual affair. And this is why you see the tongue out. And this is semen, sperm. Representing there was a, 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 a transfusion between these two. A, a, a homo, through, through homosexual acts. A genetic transfusion. Look, Dali is stating that, look, here, you see, that, you see this tall man on legs here? It's stating the same exact thing that's in this picture. Dali saying that his genes dominated those of Disney who also was a genetic bridger this would be Dali larger than life stating that he genetically now is on top he's larger than life he's carrying the, the genes of not just the Pope but many others the royalty around the world he's stating the same thing here and this is in why a lot of Dali's paintings you see these long legs, and you see him up here like he's clubbing Disney, and then you see the vibration, the reverberation of Disney head. See those lines? He clubbed Disney because his genetics dominated those of Disney. And it's showing you how it was done. That his tongue is out, and he's showing you that he drank Disney's sperm. See that? Oh, oh, you don't believe it, do you? Look at the castle, the tongue out of the castle here, people. And all this fluid down here. Why do you think the drawbridge of the castle is a tongue? 
And then they even got Tinkerbell flying around up up here. And I, I know the symbolic meaning behind that as well, too, people. This cult-like practice is what is actually being described in all of these artists' artwork. I'm telling you that Disney and Dally, there's Disney, there's Dally, are suggesting... Not just through their collaborated artworks, but through the records of each one of these individuals that they, too, were genetic contaminators of our world. And they genetically sacrificed themselves. And this is, all of their success is founded on those facts in which I have now presented to you. Here's another one of Dali's paintings. Representing semen and blood over that of the turtle. You know what the turtle was linked to? Well, there's, if you look at my videos here, the turtle is linked to a genetic bridging and an evolution during an evolutionary period of time, which is that in Cambodia, which is China. There was a genetic bridging, an intervention which represents reptilian, and it was that with the turtle. So Dali is telling you that even he too has genetically contaminated that area. And yes, he has been to China. There's a record of all of this, too, people. I, I mean, I'm not going to go in and try to describe it all in this, just in, this, in this hour of video. But each and one of his paintings shows how there was a genetic contamination, an, inter, an, an intervention of those genes that was already created through a cult-like way, and it's showing you how Dali, a, rep uh, a, um, a representative of the Vatican, carrying those genes, how he then went out and cross-contaminated other areas. And he's showing how he won, genetically beat those areas. The same thing Jesus did, people. And this is, I can do the same exact thing with the journey of Jesus. This is what this is all about. Death, resurrection, and, 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 and a creation, an altering of mankind's genes. Ancient genetics, African genetics, are being destroyed in other parts of the world. Just like you see those and those genes of Africans dying out, those that followed Egypt is following Okay, and the other areas that go right on down the line through, I mean, through, through, um, through, um, through Japan, through, um, through China. This is, these extinctions can be read because that's what they are. But these are not natural extinctions. These are induced extinctions because you're being genetically contaminated by assholes like this. And those that are in the Vatican that actually know what they are doing. And through the guise of Christianity, people, you are being genetically used as experiments. Forget the aliens coming in from space. Forget all of that. Deal with what is here. Reality. I can read to you every artist's work. Every artist's work throughout from the beginning, from that of cave art, no matter where it's at, um, that of later Renaissance art, which the Vatican oversaw, it had to go through them in order to be approved. So they're guilty as charged. Each and every Renaissance artist's artwork, I don't care who it is, references how blood and semen was bridged over and in the direction that it is going. It was important to keep these records because those that know the truth are those that know, have the ancient secret to who we are. So that there's no mistakes. And this is what the code is all about. I can do this through the lost book of Nostradamus. I can do this with, um, let me see. Oh, gosh, ancient texts, whether it's biblical, I don't care what it is. Whether it's ancient Egypt, see my videos here, people. See my videos here. And that's what this is all about. Now, I'm giving it to you on layman's terms. Again, I only went to 10th grade in school. I got a GED afterwards. 
but I'm only getting a little bit better as I go along. But imagine if I had a team of experts behind me that they take this, everything that I have given. And now imagine what this can mean for our world. It's going to create problems because now religion is being questioned in a way that it was never questioned before. But imagine after we get by that of what this means for the future of mankind. There can be cures for cancer. Cures for unknown diseases. We can even foresee diseases that are coming. Based on the results and the, and the cross-contaminations by such people like this and the Vatican. I'm telling you now that we would best be served if this message is that, that what I found that what I've discovered through my paranormal experience and encounter and have gave to you here in multiple videos was known globally. Once this thing goes global, people, we can best be served by dealing with this now. The longer this thing is drawn out, the worse it gets. This is not about the masses of the people. This is only about the select few of people. They're the ones that are procuring their bloodlines and creating these bloodlines. The masses of people are being sacrificed. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. I hope you like this video. I hope that you share this video with others. That's the most important thing. And I'm telling you that statues globally that look like they are melted together, they are multi-dimensional images that create images in images. I can, I can actually show you creatures in here because these genetic beings that were created, these bloodlines that were created actually had faces because they were once creatures that once existed through these genetic bridgings. So those creatures that, that, that we were t described as being mythical were not mythical. They were actual. They were factual. They were mutations off of, of um, uh, manipulations of bloodlines that were from uh, the original origins of mankind. And they had faces. And most of these artworks, if you want to call them that, are nothing more than genetic grails that show you how... Beings such as George Washington and others that you see in these scenarios, these Bernard scenarios and paintings, how they knew the secret and then they took and shared it with others through forms of art to make sure that their bloodline is protected that this man created. Now, for those of you that are following George Washington's footsteps, now you know that I'm telling you that the Vatican had a hand in on this. They actually injected their genes into something that George Washington had created. So if you didn't know before, you know now. So how can I know all of this? How can I read all of this? How can I tie all of this together in such a way? Because there's an understanding with all of this, people. There's an artwork. Now, this is nothing. Nothing. These artists are nothing. I can see past this to before there was images such as these. I can see images, multi-dimensional images on stone. I can see places. I see. I have discovered places that have never even been discovered. And images lost. I mean, uh, you want to call them lost symbols if you want to call call them in the Grand Canyon. Look at some of my videos. In, um, in Black Hills, in South Dakota, in the U.S. I've even found places in Alaska. I believe also, I don't know if it's Trans Transylvania or one of those other places where I have found multi-dimensional images on the rocks that have never been discovered before through my multi-dimensional sense of awareness which gives me a multi-dimensional sense of vision. So this is nothing. But understanding it is. Once you understand what came before, this is child's play. 
but it's all referencing a genetic blueprint as to who you are today. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And I'll see you on my next video. Alright? Um, I thank you for watching.